under the five-year plan in China, cloud computing and economic growth become even more entwined. And that means that development of related industries and infrastructure, that will be key, which in turn is hopefully uh, will enable the domestic substitution that China is gearing up for. So that means that cloud will be even more important for Chinese players like Huawei, which has seen its smartphone business dented in the face of U.S. restrictions. So the competition will likely get even more fierce on the mainland. Who will be the biggest winners out of this? Okay. <laughs> yes, good question. post like, pandemic, we do see the uh, digitalization to accelerate in China. And in this area, China's like cloud surface industry so far is still like kind of five years behind um, US. And uh, this is more on the uh, infrastructure as a surface, this uh, level. And But we do see there's a potential for China to uh, speed up because like, um, the um, cloud migrations are in, the, in a uh, rapid place here. And as you mentioned, like Huawei is also switching like from smartphone like to the cloud industry. But in this area, we do see um, the ask the infrastructure as a surface area is more mature, and with like Ali Cloud, Tencent Cloud, they already capture over fifty percent share. And then followed by the others, like relatively smaller player, less than ten percent, like China Telecom, Huawei, and also like somehow um, AWS or like Kings of Cloud, etc. And also Baidu, they are uh, getting in this area relatively. This part will be um, growing. I mean, robustly and uh, driven by internet application and also enterprise moving to cloud. And uh, in terms of like um, the other cloud services like software, software as a service, we do see this is actually ten years behind behind US. Mm. And so there's a high potential and there's very fragmented. Um, so ver many verticals, they will actually experience kind of like um, sustainable robust growth in the next 10 years. Now, in China's public cloud market, as you noted, is yeah. dominated by the big players, yes. Alibaba, Tencent. Is there room for smaller entrants to grab market share? If not, where is the niche areas that they could um, gain some ground? Yes, um, because we see that this market is still growing very fast. So there's actually room for the niche player because they can focus on certain um, application or industry, for example, healthcare or like um, financial service, or some may like, have a very good um, connection with the uh, government doing some kind of like proper service. These players will still capture the growth here. While the uh, giant players, they are more, more focused on like the um, large enterprise moving and also the SME, they are quickly picking up. So this will be um, the market that still allow them to grow. And, but in the long run, of course, we could exp expect somehow uh, some of the consolidation will eventually uh, evolving in the future. And what are the opportunities in China's personal cloud market? Just this week, Alibaba are launching a service to compete with Tencent and Baidu. Mm, yeah, for personal, I mean, I think um, it really depends on your applications. And so that uh, if, let's say, um, the um, Alibaba has like, a lot of like, developers, like thousands, like thousands the developers, they, they can properly focus on these like, very flexible solution, uh, very uh, comprehensive offering. But for some developer, like game developer, they will focus more like Tencent, they have like leveraging the ecosystem as well. So uh, I think individually, they will have uh, some kind of a choice and what kind of like service they can provide and of course versus their cost position. I think this is important. Now COVID fuel trends are driving higher spending on cloud capabilities uh, in Asia and that is driving suppliers like Google Cloud, AWS to seek to boost their investments. You have Huawei making inroads in Thailand. So how do China's players stack up globally? Yeah. Um, first, uh, we do see these like giant pair like Ali Cloud and Tencent Cloud. They're willing to invest. I mean, over like 200 billion or like 300 billion, they mentioned like in like three, three years or five years, et cetera. And uh, we do see that um, they will try to leverage the Chinese company going abroad to uh, expand their cloud service overseas as well. So um, we do see some of the like IDC, um, I mean, say, um, internet data center company, they already established the overseas data centers um, and also those like um, others cloud service provider or IT service provider that are preparing for these Chinese com company to expand their service in the overseas uh, market. So like just like if let's say ByteDance, like, that, um, like um, TikTok expanding the service overseas, then their service provider, no matter is actually um, Tencent or like their own IDC supplier, they will also expand along with their growth. 
Now, improving cloud capabilities will enable IoT tech like autonomous driving. What's the prospects of China pulling ahead in this race? Mm, yeah, I think uh, cloud is also riding on this kind of 5G infrastructure that is actually allowing low latency and also um, the fast transmissions. And what can actually benefit on this is actually big, uh, we see IoT is the way that to go because they have like um, multis of like uh, millions connection in the future and then that will actually leverage data um, actually through the 5G network and also the cloud network. So that is like um, the next stage that this like, technology will also ride on this infrastructure that already getting more mature in the next five years. Now let's talk about the global chip shortage. Want to get a sense of how you would trade uh, this trend. Also, it's compounded the challenges that mm -hmm. uh, Chinese uh, companies face in the uh, given there are restrictions from the U.S. and there is an impetus now to develop in-house chipsets. Uh, ByteDance recently yeah. just announcing it's going to start down that path, but it's not going to be a smooth road. IDC saying that Chinese companies will only provide for about 35 percent of domestic demand by 2030. So, what's your outlook? Um, honestly, speaking, this is not an easy task for Chinese to um, set up the chips, uh, manufacturing, all the things independently because uh, semiconductor is actually a global industry. They uh, require a lot of like global collaboration. So I think for China, I mean, this is like, a big topic and they will continue to invest, building up these like, IC design capability, leveraging the global life, um, foundry um, offering and solutions, they can manufacture their chips themselves. But the key is that they can capture the design capability, uh, make their own chip for their applications. So the artists will try, cannot like copy it, and which actually find these kind of like technologies of differentiation. So we can see like um, Apple doing their own chips, I mean design their chip, they're not manufacturing it. And uh, um, Google, I do, or like um, when uh, uh, Biden's, they're also like lancing this. It's kind of a strategy to set up their differentiation in the market. So eventually, um, if we are looking China to fill, fulfill these kind of like demand, it's very difficult because they still still require some kind of advanced technology outside. But eventually, they will continue to leverage this do domestic substitution um, to um, empower their solutions and capability in the market. And that's a long time coming, but in the yes. moment, global chip shortages. It's still there. I mean, I think this is a, a, a difficult task because we see not only like um, EV, I mean, we also see smartphone, I mean, see kind of like shortage in the global chip supply. And uh, I think as long as this like, um, manufacturing to increase the capacity throughout this year, hopefully this like, um, capacity tightener will try to resolve. But the major issue is actually demand supplies in balance will take time. So certainly, uh, maybe we see the shortage come from uh, late last year. I would say, indeed, in the mid, mid of last year already happening and then, but getting severe in fourth quarter and this quarter. So in the second quarter, we also expect some kind of like um, improvement. But I think we will also expect that this kind of like tightener will continue throughout the year. And what are the implications then for companies seeking to raise funds, going to markets as we see a uh, ramp up in domestic capabilities? Uh, yeah, I think there are so many um, IPOs I, um, in terms of like domestic substitution, this film, not only in the semiconductor, but also in the software itself. So uh, we could expect that in the, um, the, the this year, we still see some of the um, semi companies or software company to list in the starboard in China. Uh, this is a way better platform for them to raise funds to support their, um, um, I would say, R&D and also um, capacity expansions.